We've talked about erosion on the trail, where it comes from and the impacts that it has. We've also discussed some of the techniques that we have to mitigate those issues. In this video, we'll be going over the perfect locations and the steps in the process to constructing new rolling grade dips. Many of our drainage problems come from the alignment of the trail itself. Modern trail builders are now designing grade reversals into their alignments, often at short intervals to make sure water cannot travel for too long before it sheds. If your section lacks these design elements, or you can see long stretches without any type of drainage, you can begin to assess the trail for improvements. The best trail drainage is always a balance of what the land provides, what the users hope to see, and the time that we have. Before we start digging, let's walk the trail to find the best location for a new rolling grade dip. As we do this, we're paying attention to the alignment, how fast we think the water is moving, and the areas just downhill of the trail that will give us the best chance to build all of the elements of the drain. The obvious place is right where the trail grade changes, from shallow to steep. Other positive elements include small berms at the critical edge, limited amounts of large rocks, and good sight lines down the trail. These are often the best locations to ensure our work holds up through the seasons and gives us the opportunity to devote the time to building the perfect grade dip. To begin, we give ourselves some visual cues by making marks in the tread to define the grade dip. We should mark a line of where excavation begins at the top of the drain pan. As we do this, set the angle of the drain to define the leadoff ditch angle early in the process. We want to make sure the drain pan is long enough to be effective over time, and that we are thinking about the maximum amount of water possible. So next we set the down trail end of the drain pan with another line. We know we need to excavate the pan down to its center and rise it back up to the downhill edge of the drain pan, so this line shows us we have the right length from the start. The next mark we will make is the bottom of the berm. We move the soil far enough down the trail in the beginning so the berm is long enough and not too tall. We also like to know how far to throw the dirt as we start to dig. Tossing the dirt to the bottom of the berm will make sure that we don't get in our own way as we continue building. In this location, we start by removing the berm at the critical edge so we can start visualizing how the water will shed from the trail. The best place to make sure everything is going according to plan is to get down below the trail where you want to end your leadoff ditch. This allows you to see the shape and depth of your drain pan as you are constructing it, and allows you to visualize water leaving the trail well before you are done. As we continue, we are defining and shaping the low point of the drain pan, and we shouldn't be surprised if we need to go deeper. Once we have the drain pan close, we start establishing the leadoff ditch. While we do that, we need to think about small amounts of water and how the water will shed from the trail. Now that the leadoff ditch is installed, we continue to shape and make improvements to the whole feature. We use our hand tools to make sure we have the right width, length, and depth of each element. Let's take a look at this gray dip we just finished. What we like about it is the angle and the depth of the drain pan. It's nice and mellow, so we won't be speeding water up as it leaves the trail. The leadoff ditch is about as wide as the tread itself, meaning even during a flood, we won't be causing more damage. And the berm behind me, it's about 10 feet long. It's not a speed bump, and the average trail user will barely notice this as they travel along the trail.